Namaste. Are you going? Without kumbaka or breath retention, pranayama is incomplete. While you're still building it, it's all right to focus on the basics first. Like for example, how to align the spine, how to use the hand if it requires so, uh, so like that. But once you've gained familiarity with the basic external techniques, yeah, you need to practice kumbaka alongside your pranayama. Why so? All right. The goal of pranayama is first yeah, to continue our internal cleansing yeah, because we're going to be utilizing the pressure of the breath to go into those deep hidden pockets in the body. And yeah, this one to continue cleansing process yeah, to awaken the dormant centers in the body and the brain, which is important when the brain connects to the body and awaken the nerve clusters that we call chakras, subtle sensations will start to manifest and we will be focusing on them during meditation. Next, yeah. Uh, for us to be able to, uh, to store more energy out of this gaseous air, yeah, we inspire yeah, because some energetic meditative observances require us to uh, limit our consumption of food. Yeah, if you're doing your fast or sadhana, for example, if you're sick, you can utilize the pranayama, you can utilize that excess energy to support your healing process. And of course, to build awareness. Yeah, for me, awareness is important. Yeah, you can gain knowledge by reading and studying, but only practice yeah, will allow you to gain understanding of the element. And this is humbling because pranayama will allow you to not just uh, achieve high potential, but also yeah, it will you know, bring about you know, your weaknesses, your fears, yeah, and you know, it's, it's, it's you actually. Yeah. There's, there's no competition here. Yeah. You are facing your own fears. You are rising above your own limitations when you do pranayama. And this is so humbling. However, yeah, pranayama and kumbhaka would have to be approached with guidance because kumbhaka would uh, have to be progressive too. For example, yeah, the first month, four seconds only, and then adding yeah, a second or two there every month or so until you can what yeah, build it up to what a minute of kumbhaka or 30 seconds of kumbhaka. And the teacher will be able to provide you because each progression, there's uh, an additional yeah, practice attached yeah, to each progression so you continue your building process. Yeah, and the, the program would have to be synchronized. And then even the type of pranayama would have to be learned progressively because we need to awaken the dormant centers progressively too. Yeah, from bottom to top, yeah, so to speak. From the bottom chakras to the top and not from top to bottom because if you awaken this too soon, too fast, yeah, this could lead to conflict, yeah, internal conflicts, not just physical conflict, for conflict, but also mental, psychological, and spiritual conflict. And this is bad if you're not ready to face the brutal realities of yeah, your nature, which includes your subconscious. Yes, so um, all the pranayama yeah, is good for increasing your energy, for achieving higher potentials. There's dangers attached to this. Yeah. It doesn't mean that, for example, you see a technique that happening is so popular, you adapt it. You need to ask, and the teacher will be able to yeah, enlighten you. A teacher who has been in and out of the process many times. Yes, being a teacher yeah, is no easy task. Yeah, because as teachers, we need to go through them, face them, yeah, and rise above yeah, the limitations, even the mistakes. We commit along the way, so when we teach our students, yeah, they remain safe, and then the practice is lifetime. Good. See you, yeah, and I'll catch you in the next one. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care. Namaste.